Hi, I'm Vanny from Greenwood Solutions. This week we're following on from our series on DC cabling requirements for a solar ground mount system. So after watching, you'll understand how to make the correct choice from a volt drop perspective, also a current carrying capacity perspective between four and six mil. Should you parallel or not parallel? And what are the price differences between using six mil cable and four mil cable? If you like what you see, hit that subscription button and let's get stuck into it. Ready, steady, go. So where do we leave off from last time? In our last presentation, we looked at the DC cabling requirements of a solar ground mount system. So let's revisit the details. System size was 1.28 megawatts. All strings consisted of 20 by 400 watt panels, eight strings per row, 20 rows in total, now per row there's eight by strings of 20 by 400 watt panels per string, so row lengths are approximately 85 metres wide. There are 20 rows, total distance north-south, the spacing is 142 metres, which includes the four metre north and four metre south perimeter roads. So in, in this case, the combined length of the positive and negative cables per row is approximately 256 metres, made up of four runs of 31 plus metres, four runs of 21 plus metres, and four runs of 11 plus metres. Each string's horizontal distance has been calculated at 10.65 metres. The string is across two tiers, 10 panels per tier, and takes into account the panel width and the gaps between the individual panels. For more details, see our previous presentation. In part one, we looked at the requirements for a system that did not parallel any strings and was using four mil cable. But what we didn't cover is the actual volt drop calculations and also the viability of options to actually parallel strings. And of course, in, in that case, you're using a thicker cable. So that's what we'll be looking at in this presentation. Now, the distance from row one to row 20 is approximately 133 meters. So, and this is excluding the perimeter access roads because we don't have to take them into consideration for this cabling um, exercise. What about the voltage drop calculations? What percentage increase should I allow for bends and trenching? What about mistakes? Should we parallel the strings instead? Is that a better option? The recommended volt drop is 3%. Uh, that's a, a should, not a shall. But remember, any energy that the panels are outputting is reduced because of that cable run and what the inverter receives is considerably less. Obviously using a four mil cable compared to six mil, your volt drop is going to be higher. And also what has to be taken into consideration is the current carrying capacity of the cables. The longest cable run, row one, is 166 metres approximately. We will assume that the voltage maximum power point for this string is 800. And the short circuit current of the panels in question are 10 amps. So what is the volt drop using four mil squared DC cable? So we're talking four mil cable, single, non-paralleled runs. Now the longest run obviously is 166 metres, and that's made up of by the, the 133 metre run between row number one and row number 20, and then add on another 30 odd metres. So that's the calculation we're doing on our volt drop calculation. The current, okay, so we're talking a non-parallel string, it's 10 amps for this particular panel, and we're assuming a voltage at maximum power point of 800 volts. So the volt drop percentage in this case is 2.33%. Now it probably will be higher because we haven't taken into consideration some bands dropping down into, into the, uh, the trench and a few other things. So we're getting up pretty close to that 3%. Using four mil cable, we have 160 cable runs from each string to the inverter station. As we are not paralleling any strings, this means 160 DC switches. And we are assuming the inverters have their own built-in DC isolators or DC switch. In this case, we're going to look at 6 mil. So we have the same internal cabling requirements. Remember, we have four strings on this side, four strings on this side, all coming to a central point. So we're going to still use 256 mils, oh sorry, 256 metres of cable. Whether we use 4 mil or 6 mil is, is another question. But at this point here, 
we are effectively paralleling two strings into each of the four DC isolators. So we've got two strings coming in here, two strings in here, two strings in here, and two strings in here. We've obviously reduced our long cable run. Remember that cable run? All the way to inverter station is 133 meters. So we're doing our volt drop calculations first on this run and then on the internal runs as well. Now in the four mil calculation, we, were, we went worst case scenario, the string that's furthest away from the center was 166 meters of cable, that run from there all the way through. But in this case, we are stopping here and doing a connection at the DC isolator. So we have to do two calculations. We have to do the volt drop here and the internal volt drop here. Now in this case, we're using six mil cables. So straight away, we've re reduced the number of um, DC isolators by half. So we're looking at six mil cable and we're looking at parallel strings. So straight away, instead of the 10 amp amount, we're looking at 20 amps, two strings parallel together. We're still looking at 800 volts maximum power point. And we're looking at a distance of 133 meters for the worst case scenario run. That's row one all the way to row 20, not row two. So for six mil parallel cable, we're looking at a volt drop of 2.49% for, um, for the cable run holding 20 amps because it's two strings parallel over 133 meters. Now, as well as that calculation, we also have to calculate separately the volt drop for the internal cabling. And in this case, it's 0.43% using four mil cable. Now that's getting a little bit close to that 3%, so it probably is advantageous on this row to use six mil all the way through to bring that overall volt drop calculation down the percentage. With a design that does not parallel, we can only use four mil squared as a minimum. If we parallel, a minimum we can use is six mil squared on the longest runs. Paralleling two by string saves on the number of DC isolators used. It also saves on labor time, cables, less connections, less work. From a cost perspective, our design would use both four and six mil squared, ideally. Assumptions. We have two basic designs. One uses all four mil cable, the other uses all six mil cable. Cost per meter of four mil squared is assumed to be about a dollar. Cost per metre of 6 mil squared is assumed to be $1.50. But there is another question to ask. If we do parallel strings, how much cable is required? And the answer is a little over 16,000 metres. The cable cost for 4 mil squared is 27,000 metres times a dollar, so $27,000 for 4 mil cable on that design. The cable cost for 6 mil Squared cable design is 16,000 times $1.50, because it's $1.50 per metre for six mil, and that's $24,000. So that's a difference of $3,000 just on the cabling. Six mil squared is the winner based on this approach. But this is not the full story. Conclusion, to parallel or not to parallel, that is the question. All cable runs must take into consideration voltage drop requirements. Materials and the labour component both must be taken into consideration. Thanks so much for watching part two on our three-part series on DC cabling requirements for large solar ground mount systems. I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions. If you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, please feel free to drop us a line and looking forward to presenting part three. Bye for now.